Praise God. All right, we've been talking about inner healing. But with that inner healing comes uh, as we get inner healed and find out what uh, has caused us to need healing to start with. I've often said this, that we get people healed, but if we don't teach the other people in the church or in our families to quit bruising the saints, then we just go around the mountain, around the mountain, around the mountain. Okay? Now, how do you get bruised? Many times we bruise ourselves. How? By our thinking, by our lack of maturity. We can get offended very easy. And, and this is what you're going to have to watch out for. I'll guarantee you, I don't care who, who you are, pastor, deacon, elder, pastor's wife, minister's wife, grandma, grandpa, you're a human being. And you've got certain feelings. We all have certain feelings. And feelings within themselves are not sinful and bad. So we've been talking about how to handle our feelings and not let our feelings dictate to us. Why not? Well, I think we need to pay attention to our feelings, but they're not always truthful. They can lie to you. The devil can make you feel like you're the worst person in the world, and you might be the best person in the world. So you can't trust your feelings and go by your feelings. Boy, I feel like I should buy that new car. Forget it. <laughs> I just said that. Uh, anybody ever bought a car? And then you say, why did I buy this car? Well, I felt like I should have that car. You can't do that. You've got to learn to follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, anybody listening? Mm -hmm. All right, look at, it, look at it up there now. In accordance with this will. How many of you know before a will, if somebody, somebody makes out a will, it's no good until they die. And when they die, then it, be, it comes into uh, uh, to be a, uh, effective. Okay? Christ died, so his will is, uh, is in effect. Will of God, we have been made holy. Now, be honest. And think back of the years that we've all come through the religious cycle, so to speak. We've all been told we're nothing but an old sinner. How many how many has been told that a lot? Let's see your hands. Raise your hands. Okay. How many has never heard that that you were an old sinner? All right, let's say that again. <clears throat> how many in here? have heard in your life in the church and, and messages about everything you don't, you don't do, you don't do, you don't do. You're just an old sinner. How many has heard that a lot? Let's see your hands. Okay. Well, that's for the lost person because a saint is not a sinner. Well, if a saint is not a sinner, then what is a saint? Well, a saint is a saint, <laughs> is a child of God that God has taken out of the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of the Son of God. Okay? But as saints, we still have feelings. But look what the word of the Lord says. And that's in Hebrews 10.1. And in accordance with this will of God, we have been made holy. Now you've got to ask yourself a question. The will of God. Hmm. His covenant. How many know that God does not lie? You know that? If he says you're holy, how many have said I'm not holy besides me? <laughs> you see, we're arguing with God. Why would we argue with God? Because somewhere we've had some teachings that pound that we're just an old sinner. I used to be an evangelist. And if I couldn't beat people to the altar and get them to come by the Holy Spirit, I'd put condemnation on them and get them all crawled to the altar. How many know what I'm talking about? If you've been around a long time like I have, I've been, I mean, to always talking about, you know. Now, how many of you know we don't want to sin? How many in here wants to sin? Let me see your hands. Good, I'm talking to the right people. 
Sin has been dealt with once and for all by the one sacrifice. Notice this. Now, consecrated and, and sanctified through the offering. Now, through the offering. Who was the offering? Jesus. Jesus was the offering. He was the sacrifice. And through his sacrifice, through his offering, we've been made for all for all of the body of Jesus. Wait a minute. Sanctified through the offering made once for all of the body of Jesus Christ in the one. So we've been made holy, concentrated, consecrated, sanctified by one offering once and for all. Everybody say once and for all. Now, I'm going to use that once and for all tonight because it's very important. I hope we'll get into this. I know you're studying this at home, right? You're all studying it. We're going to get into that eventually. Once and for all, the devil has been defeated. Now, you've got to have that by revelation. How many of you know what I mean by revelation? Revelation is when the Word becomes so alive to you it puts hallelujah in you. You begin to bubble inside. The anointing begins to jump and jive inside of you. I mean, you just are on fire when the Word of God becomes rhema to you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema word of God. That's why you study the Scriptures. And the things that I share with you I share revelation with you. I don't just make a sermon. That scripture up there has been made alive to me. That became rainbow to me. I teach rainbow word. Okay? That's important. You're getting rainbow word. <coughs> now, I want you to think about it. Randy, you're holy. consecrated and who did it God did it what does that do for you when that becomes rhema your spirit you which is the spirit I'm telling you we'll jump and jive we'll bubble okay all right uh, let's go to our next scripture real quick and then I'm going to get into this. Uh, let's move on down to 9 real quick. Mm, 9. 10. I'm sorry, 10. Let's go. Okay, go, let's go to 10. 10. Oh, 10, I already said that. Uh, I'm looking, I'm sorry. Let's go to 11 real quick. 10, 11. Furthermore, every human priest stands at his altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over again, which never are able to strip from every side of us the sins that envelop us and take them away. So all of the Old Testaments never took the sins away, only covered the sins, and they had to be offered over and over and over until the one sacrifice that would be given would be given, and that was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And when that sacrifice was given, that was it. You didn't need any more sacrifices. That took care of every sin that human beings would ever commit. All right? Look at verse 12, real quick, like. Well, he's ahead of me. Hmm. Whereas this one Christ after he offered a single sacrifice for our sins that shall avail for all time. Now catch it, that shall avail for all time. That one sacrifice shall avail for all time. Set down at the right hand of God. Complete, finish. Sin was conquered and dealt with once and for all, by 
the one sacrifice. Let's move to the next. Uh, 14, go to 14. 14, next. No, that's 13. Go to 4, okay. For by a single offering, and what was the single offering? Christ. He, that is Christ, has forever completely cleansed, remember it's forever, completely cleansed and perfected those who are consecrated and made holy. Finish. Done with. Now see, once that becomes rainbow to you, you'll start praying different. People will start living different. How many of us, if we're honest, and I've been right in the middle of probably all of you, oh Lord, cleanse me, sanctify me, oh Lord, save me. When I was in the Baptist church, at least once a month, I went up to the altar. And my heart was right, just in case it didn't really hold up. But see, I've had to grow and mature and get into the Word of God and found out once and for all, He did it. I'm clean. I'm clean tonight. All right. Now, just in case it's in somebody's mind saying, well, what happens if I sin right now? If I willfully sin, what would I do? 1 John 1, 9, put it up on the board. Very simple, not complicated. Real quick, and then we're going to... All right, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, He is what? God is faithful and just, true to His own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and dismiss our lawlessness and continuously cleanse us from all sin, unrighteousness of everything not in conformity to His will, purpose, thought, and action. And you confess it, and now you're back free, cleansed, and you can move forward. You are not to have no sins on you. Now, see, that's important because if you have sin on you, the devil, the devil, you know, the devil, Satan. You ever seen him? He's ugly. Yeah, he's ugly, man. Bad, bad spirit, yeah. cannot touch you because the Bible says in 1 Peter 1 it says that we are kept by the power of God and when we walk in the spirit without any sin but how many people walk and still feel like they're sinners and that ain't going to get it Lord forgive me Forgive you for what? What have you done? Now, here's what's important. Sometimes people, because they're tempted, they think temptation is a sin. Hear me now. Temptation is not a sin. In fact, the Bible says when you're tempted and you endure that temptation, there will be a crown of righteousness laid up for you in heaven. James tells us that. Every thought in your mind that you know that is not godly that's, you're not sinning because that thought is in your mind, but the devil's trying to make you think. And so is a man thinking, so is that man. If you think you're sinning because this particular thing that you know is sin sort of hits your mind, the old saying is you can't, you can't stop a bird from landing on your head, but you can stop that bird from building a nest there. Okay? Now, I'll tell you what, you'll get set free tonight if you listen to me. If you believe in uh, uh, praying for that rainbow word, that God's spirit of wisdom and revelation will... In fact, let's do that right now. Say, Lord, Lord. let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon me. Now, listen to me, saints. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to teach us, to direct us, and show us things yet to come. And as we learn to walk in the spirit, and understand and get the revelation, knowledge, and he understand he's our teacher. Everybody say, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Is, my teacher. is my teacher. All right. Well, why do you have me? 
because the Holy Spirit works through teachers, works through pastors to help us all uh, and, to, and to teach us. He needs my voice to go to you where you can hear, but he'll show you and give you the revelation knowledge of that word right there. Mike, let's say, all right, you're walking down a road. Are you sanctified? Are you holy? Okay. Are you a child of God? Have you been justified? Sanctified? And who did it? But suppose you really do sin. What would you do? <laughs> That's it. Not complicated. You don't have to fast three days. You don't have to throw rocks at the preacher. I mean, you don't have to do none of that stuff. <laughs> Just say, thank you, Father. I receive. I receive. And walk in that knowledge that you are clean before God. And God has made you holy. Now listen to me. God got on the Apostle Peter. Why did he get on the Apostle Peter? Here's what he said to Peter. This sheet, remember the sheet? You'll find this in Acts chapter 10. The sheet comes down and is full of all unclean animals. Okay? And God says, kill and eat. Not so, Lord. I don't touch anything that's unclean. And, and, and how many of you know that those animals that was in that sheet represented Gentiles? We understand that when you read that whole chapter, that's what comes out. And, and, and the Lord says, Peter, don't you call what I have hallowed and cleansed unclean. Have you ever called yourself unclean? Sure. Bob, yes. Quit calling you. Listen, my son, don't you realize the sacrifice? The blood is so powerful that it has cleansed you from all sin. When I see you, I don't look at sin. I don't look at a sinner. I look at a saint, a child of God. I have adopted you into my family. You're my sons, my daughters. I have an inheritance for you. I love you. And you see, as we see that, we can say, wow, I can go to the throne of God now. I could go right to the throne of God boldly, with confidence and talk to my heavenly father and receive the help and grace in time of need. Now listen to me. This is so important. If we don't think that we are cleansed by the blood, really we're, we're, really, we're really opposing what God has done for us. If I bring it right down to it. How could you go to the throne of God if you think you're no sinner? You can't come boldly. What did Adam and Eve do when they sinned? They went to the throne, right? Man, they was heading out of town as fast as they could. That's terminology for the day, okay. And who looked them up? Hmm? God did. Adam? How's everything going today? Rough, Lord, that wife you gave me. You'll notice, notice yourself if you're not careful. People always blame somebody else, but they never blame themselves. Brother Bob offended me. But why are you getting offended? Hmm, must be something in me that needs to be changed. Hmm, Lord, it seems like I get offended quite a bit. Lord, help me. That's why the Spirit of the Lord was given to us. And he says, fine, I'm going to help you. Get into my word, because the word of God will encourage you. And I'll show you how 
I can bring you to a point that you won't get offended every, t every time somebody looks at you cross-eyed. It's so easy to get offended. But see, what happens is we don't know that feeling. Now I want to move on into that, that feeling. And that feeling of resentment that we feel. What happened to that sweet fellowship I had with you? You read Paul's letter? Have you read Paul's letter? about What was that good feeling that we had with one another? Why do you feel resentment towards me now? What have I done but just tell you the truth? And, and I told you the truth and now you're mad at me. What happened to that sweet fellowship we had? How many has read that in the Bible? Yeah. It, it, now, ask yourself a question. We come to church to learn, but also, just in case, does anybody in here have any hard feelings towards anybody? Anybody back on the back row back there? <laughs> Check yourself every day on that, okay? And, and get in touch. Say, you're, to, right now, what are you feeling inside? What are you feeling right now? That's important. Is there any resentment there? Is there any prejudices there? See, once we get a hold and understand what we feel, then we can talk with God and God will cleanse us out. And, and that's where we come into the inner healing. Many times we need inner healing to where, be, before we can actually bless people. Now, if you're not blessing them, Start blessing, because I guarantee you, if you bless everybody you see and you just bless everybody and bless yourself, I guarantee in one month you'll be a total person. Just keep blessing them, because we are what? Called to be blessed. Where's that found? 1 Peter 3, uh, 8 and 9. We have been called to bless. Bless you, brother. Now, what's happening when I bless him? I get a blessing. Somebody you feel ill towards. And you, if you're honest, you really would like to send them to the moon. But you bless them. You bless them. See, the moon, the moon can only hold so many people. You know, we've got we to gotta send them to Mars, maybe. I think moon, the moon's probably filled up. See, this, this is so important that we bless, because why, why? Let me see, I need a couple demonstrations here. Uh, who, who will volunteer? All right, all right. Ronnie, you're going to volunteer. Randy, I'm sorry. Ronnie, I was close. <laughs> uh, all right, you come up. Let's have this brother come up here. Uh, all right, you stand over there. All right. Randy, you do something, and he feels uh, teed off at you. He's mad at you. He feels resentment towards you. To get clear of that resentment. Forgiving him for what he did ain't really for him. Got it? Everybody got that? He did something to, to our brother here. He feels bad about it. He feels mad about it. Real bad about it. He don't like it. He sort of started resenting him for what he did. Forgiving him is not for him. Who's it for? Yeah. Boy, that's important to get down, nail it down, and as quick as you feel offended what somebody has done, forgive them like that real quick. Because if he doesn't, didn't, he has opened the door to Satan. And if that door stays open long enough, he'll be suffering bad times. Okay, you got that? That's right. Shut the door. Thank you, gentlemen. Very important. All right, now. Salvation, once and for all, every sin that you've ever committed has been dealt with, is done. The word reconciliation means 
made friendly again. God is not mad at nobody no more. And you'll find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse probably about 18 and 19 in there. In fact, put that on the board, if you will. Because this all has to do with getting healed, okay? Getting those wounds and those disappointments and everything that we could hold against people. All right. Uh, but all things are from God who through Jesus Christ, that is God through Jesus Christ, reconciled us to himself. Reconciled us to himself. Ooh, that's powerful. Mike, would you stand up here? All right, you're Jesus. You come and you reconcile me back to the Father by offering yourself and you die on the cross. And when you did that, you reconciled me. In other words, it satisfied the Father and he's not mad at me no more. And now I'm reconciled back to the Father and we can hang out together. <laughs> he ain't mad at me no more. Because what his son did for me. I love it. And you got to see that picture. All right, thank you, thank you. Woo, reconcile. Now look, received us into favor. Not only reconciled, not only did Jesus reconcile me back to the Father, but know what it says, received us into God's favor. We have God's favor. Boy, when people reject salvation, I feel sorry for them. Every one of us that, that received Christ is now in the favor of God. He ain't mad at us no more. We've been reconciled by the one sacrifice once and for all and forever. It is done, finished, complete. Man, if that don't put a little zip in your feet, I don't know what will. If I had a cane walking on a cane, I'd probably walk on the cane. I'd bubble up inside. I seen the scriptures today about bubbling up inside with so much joy. Brought us into harmony. Say, brought us into harmony. I'm say I'm in harmony with God. God and me are friends. He's my heavenly Father. I can tell Him everything. He loves me. He's not rejecting me. What a friend! No wonder we say, "How's that song goes?" The friend in Jesus. What a friend we have in, in Jesus. Shake my hand, partner. In Jesus. What a friend we have. Well, you got a grip there, son. What a friend we have. In best friend you'll ever have. You can tell him all your problems and he won't squeal on you. I'll tell you, he's great. Look what it says. Brought us into harmony with himself and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him, with God. And when we win someone to Christ, that's what we're doing. That's our ministry. The ministry of reconciliation. Wow, God is so good. Oh, my goodness. All right. Have we got, our, we got our sheets here? Here we go. All right, we've got to have another spin. I want you to turn, if you will, to verse... <coughs> uh, let's go to page 6. Okay, and let's start with page 6. Keys to inner healing. The first thing that you want to settle in any feelings of guilt. Now, what we've done, what I have done in preaching this morning for the first half an hour, I have instantiated us in our salvation. We're not talking about getting right with God here. We're talking about how do we handle our feelings. Why do we feel a certain way? Why do I feel hurt? Why do I feel wounded? Why do I feel disappointed? Why all of these negative feelings in my emotions. See, that's really where the real battle, a big battle is. So, notice this. 
The first thing that you want to settle is any feelings of guilt and shame. Why do you feel guilt? Why do you feel shame? Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't mind opening my life. Is, my, my, my life is an open book. If I don't open my life to you, I'm not going to help you. You might think I was one big saint. I hate to puncture your balloon, but I wasn't. But I am now because of what God did at Calvary for me. So when you say, Bob, you're just an old sinner, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I'm a saint. You know why? Because if I said I was a sinner, I would be discredit discrediting the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. Come on now. Don't shout me down. That's preaching material there. I ain't going to do that no more. I've done that. But I ain't doing that no more. All right, look what it says now. We're talking about feelings. Would you recognize the guilt? That guilt just eats at you, eats at you, eats you. See, you've got to check your feelings now. Do you feel like, do you feel guilty? You're reconciled back to God. All your sins are forgiven. What would you feel guilty about? Now think about it. Think about that. Do you feel ashamed of something you did in the past? And the devil brings it up in your mind all the time. And then that guilt begins to mount up in your feelings. Remember, now we're dealing with feelings. And you've got to stop and realize, no, it was all dealt with at Calvary. See, the devil's trying to plant that into your being. And you're just going to walk around. You're not going to be a victorious Christian at all. I like the way uh, Frank prayed tonight, Annie. Annie, you're not an overcomer. You're more than an overcomer because of Christ. Powerful. I'd, I'd pretty well be satisfied just being an overcomer. More than an overcomer. More than an overcomer. See, as long as the devil can keep you under his foot, he's going to stand on you 24-7. You've got to rise up, kick him off. Remember, once and for all, he was defeated. Where? At the cross. At the cross. Having spoilt principalities and powers, Jesus Christ made a show with them openly, triumphing over them. Who's them? Demonic powers, principalities, and open, made the open shame of them, triumphing over them in it, in it. What is it? The cross. In Colossians 2, chapter 2. Christ defeated every demon on the face of the earth. Well, Bob, how do you make all this come a reality? Faith. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. God has given every man a measure of faith. Whatever you have to overcome in this world, you have the measure, I have the measure of faith to overcome that. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. You, you will have your wilderness experience, but how long you stay in the wilderness depends on you. The quicker you can grab the messages that I preach in this church, you'll come out of that wilderness more than a conqueror, not just theology more, but experientially more. You will feel it, you will shout it, you will preach it, you will teach it, and you will walk in it without any problem. Because you have the revelation knowledge of what Jesus Christ has done for you. What God has done for you through Christ. Boy, that's powerful. All right. I don't mean to get excited, but bubble, 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 bubble. I'm telling you, it's exciting. Because I have, believe me, <laughs> I've been in the wilderness. <laughs> it's a lot better on this side of Jordan than that wilderness. Okay. So, are you still feeling guilt? Are you still feeling shame? It'll eat you alive. Now, I'm asking you the question, and you're going to have to, in your own heart and mind, be honest. And if you are, you, you need to let us know where we can help you deal with it. Okay? That's what we're here for, to help people. All right. Now, notice this. Especially any feelings that God is somehow disappointed or angry with you. Now, you might have had those feelings along the way. I have. I'll be honest. I have. Anybody else want to confess? Let me hear it. 
Raise your hand. Okay. See, we're all human beings. We're all from the same stump. The same things that the devil chide me with, he'll get on your case with too. So you don't have to really raise your hand. I already know, okay? I've been around long. But it's good for you to admit it and recognize. I'm trying to get you to recognize what the devil could use to just pull you down every day, every day. Okay? All right. Sir? There you go. Never doubt God's word. All right, disappointed or angry with you. Why would God be angry with you? He reconciled you back to himself through Christ. But you see, feeling. I don't quite feel like God has forgiven me. Why? Maybe unbelief, you know? And I've been there. And I've had to repent of my unbelief. <laughs> All right, let's get, see, when you get honest with God, oh, he'll, I mean, he'll just, you'll get set free like that. All right, when dealing with a physical wound, what is the first thing you do? Cleanse, cleanse it from germs so that it can properly heal. When dealing with spiritual or emotional wounds, carrying around baggage like guilt and shame and fear, now, I'm going to ask everybody another question because this is a prominent emotion and feeling. Is there any fear right now in your life? Just be honest with yourself. All right. It, let's just say that it, it's okay. You're human. <laughs> it's okay to have fear, you know, but you don't want it to hang around. How many ever felt fear? Yeah. So any time we know that God's not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power. Okay. So if, if we have fear. Now, that also comes from just being a human being because of the, of, the, of the fault of Adam. We have a tendency to not believe more than believe. We have a tendency to lean to the negative more than the positive. That's why our minds have to get renewed. All right, let's move on now. Carrying around baggage, guilt, shame, fear makes the healing process much more difficult. Getting yourself to the point where you know that God loves, forgives, and accepts you. Now, that's what you dwell on. Say, everybody say, God loves me. All right, that's a good start right there. God has forgiven me. Okay. Now, I want to say something. And I'm trying to edify everybody, but I've got to cover this point. I signed a note for somebody one time for $3,000. If they, if they didn't pay, Bob and Susan would pay. Two months went by, they never paid the first payment on that $3,000. Now, this is when $3,000 was like $10,000 way back in the, mm, I'd say the early 70s. And I've always done that because I've always tried to help people out in every area that I can. And I, I praise God, it was, you know, and I'm so sure I signed God, you know, God is with me and all that. So I get a letter from this finance company that these people are not going to pay. And so you owe it, Mr. Tilton, $3,000. So if it was in the days, probably 10000 Well, I got my gun. No humor, R.W., okay. So, we've had deliverance from things like that before. God took care of it. As soon as we got on our knees together, we prayed, Lord, you know, and we found out that we were going to have to pay it. So, the finance company had a real high interest rate on this money, so God gave me the wisdom to go down to the credit union borrow $3,000 with a lower interest rating on and pay off that debt to that other finance company. And so I had three children, braces, we tithed, all the expenses that, you know, what we have, we, we, we stayed level, we stayed level, we prayed and we just trusted God. 
and we had to pay that $3,000 off. And Susan, uh, in the afternoon, got a part-time job. Uh, I'm trying to, Grants. You ever remember Grants? Years ago, there was a Grants, okay? She got a job there. And about four hours in the evening, I took care of the kids. Then I would pick her up at 10 o'clock, and she worked to the point where we paid that loan off. And then we, we say, so you'll have times in which, now, what I'm trying to say is, that was a good thing that I did. But then on the other hand, we suffered for it. And whether it was a bad thing or a good thing, we suffered for it. And sometimes we have to, even though God's forgiven us, because we make bad decisions, or at the time it seemed like a good decision, but it turned out bad because the people we thought was going to be honest, of course they're Christian people, and they, they, would, they wouldn't expect, I mean, you, oh, well, we won't go into that. How many know what I'm talking about? So we didn't, we didn't tear the church down. We didn't shoot one another. We went to God. God gave us direction and the ability to bear and forbear. Some things we just have to bear. Now, we don't like to bear, but you just got to forbear. In fact, we're to forbear with one another. Boy, don't get me going that way now. Hmm. Anyway. All right, so I'm just throwing that wisdom in that you, that you could understand. Okay, let's move on real quick. Like I cannot believe it. I praise the Lord. All right. Getting yourself to the point where you know that God loves, forgives, and accepts you is one of the foundations to receive inner healing. If you think God is against you, how can you use faith in a God that you think that's against you, that he's not for you? You've got to be persuaded and know by God's word, he's for you. He loves you. And you might be in that situation or, or some of these things have happened to you that have been, and believe me, we have dealt with people they had some harsh things happen to them. It was hard for them to forgive, but I kept reminding them, it's for your sake that you forgive what that person did to you. Not so much for that person's sake, it's more for your sake. Because the Bible says if you don't forgive one another, and Jesus said this, that you'll be turned over to what? The tormentors, evil spirits. Okay? Now that's not God's will, but there's principles that he cannot violate. Do we understand that? Why did God do that? He has to uphold his word also. Do we understand that? Yeah. So you've got to remember that, and so he tries to lead us to the point where that we'll do what he tells us to do. But some things, if we make a mistake, yes, God's forgiven us, but we have to live sometimes uh, with the result of that particular bad thing. So you kids remember that, okay? You understand what I'm saying, son? Do you? Good. Right on. All right. I'm going to ask you a question. I love the Lord. Boy, I love the Lord. Everybody look at me. I love the Lord. And God says, Bob, don't touch the hot stove. But I love the Lord. But I love the Lord. There's a rattlesnake. Oh, I love the Lord. Should we want me to get my rattlesnake out of there? Oh, look at this little rattlesnake. Ooh, he bit me. It's not a question about God not loving you. There are just certain laws that's been set up by God. Rattlesnake bite. Rattlesnake has poison. Rattlesnake will kill you if he bites you and if you don't get quick help. Very simple, not complicated. But I love the Lord. Don't make no difference. You're out of here if you don't get treatment. Do we understand that? Wisdom. Oh, God, give me wisdom to make right decisions. How many people are in jail today? 15, 20 years, 30 years of jail. One stupid thing. Robbed the first national bank that my money was in there. Is 
30 years in jail, son. How about the drug scene? We had a brother come here one time, and I know this is the negative, but we need to hear it. He come, boy, he was doing great. I got him on everything that I put people on to get him moving. They got free and everything, and and then he knew not to drink and mix uh, drugs. And we talked about that and how when you take drugs, you can open your mind up to the evil spirits, and these evil spirits can come in and take over your life and all. I, I everything. He was straight. He gave in to temptation. I got a phone call. Pastor Bob, yeah, did you hear about Bill? No, what happened? They found him in the bathroom this morning, dead. How did it happen? Well, he was drunk and he was taking some drugs. You know, sometimes you wonder why I... <coughs> Can you understand how that... Let's say that's your son, that's your daughter. That disturbs me. I'm just being honest. That disturbs me. Bill, you knew better than that. We went over every issue about that garbage, about that stuff. But I felt a little low, and I just had to get my feelings built up. To when I was down on 10. Now, yeah, you down, period. Church, am I too rough? Can you sense my love for people? It is serious. This is serious business. This is not... And I know you guys aren't playing, but this goes on a DVD, and it's going out into the world. They need to hear a little something about this. There are men and women that really care for people, but you can't mess around a hot stove. It'll burn you. You can't mess with snakes. You can't mess with drugs. You can't mess with alcohol. I'll tell you one more story, and uh, because I think it's important. This man, he, he just always had a, some some liquor up in his cabinet. Every time something big would happen, they would go and get a little drink, and they would drink just a little drink. It won't hurt you. Well, that's not a point. That wasn't a sin. You can drink a little liquor. Would, no big sin. But it can move into sin. That's the first step. That's why I gave it up. For example's sake, what kind of example, you know, would it be? Y'all excuse me for a moment. Pour me a little shot. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Ooh. <sighs> you walk out. Wait a minute. Let me light my cigar first. <sighs> See, examples that we do a lot of things for example's sakes. Okay. But anyway, his oldest daughter graduated from high school. And so, of course, he went to the graduation and all and and his daughter and her boyfriend went out to celebrate the graduation, and that's great, and that's wonderful. So he comes home and says, man, that was my daughter has graduated. He reaches up for his liquor. Couldn't find it. He saw a note up there. Dad, I borrowed your liquor for just a little while because I want to celebrate with my boyfriend about my graduation. Oh, boy. So he puts the note on the thing. An hour later, he gets a phone call. What? Who? Yeah, uh -huh. I have a daughter like that. Yeah, that's her name. Yeah, what? She's in an automobile accident. What? Killed instantly. Whew. Anybody hearing me? How do you think you feel? What we do, there are ripple effects. And I talk to my own children this way. Susan and me talk to one another. I talk to myself. Bob, there's a ripple effect. What type of ripple effect is this going to be down the line? And we have to really, really get to know the Lord and get committed and dedicated all the way with God. None of this shallow stuff. All the way. All the way with God. And that's how you build an honest relationship with God. I am sold out. And I'm not saying you're not. You're going to have to tell me. i got the floor. I am sold out totally, absolutely. If I die in the process of preaching the gospel, no big deal. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. We may, we have, to, we may have somebody come to that door one day. I'm being honest. We need to prepare ourselves. <laughs> You can hear, you, you, can, you can see more of that. 
Bob, you're scaring us. No, I'm warning you. Be ready. You can be out of this world like that. I've lived long enough to see it. People that love the Lord. Right now in Egypt, they are killing Christians and burning their church building down. Right there in Syria, they're killing Christians. This thing over there that's coming together, it's all in the Bible. I haven't been preaching on it because I'm just looking, I'm watching, I'm praying, I'm studying. I'm seeing the picture of what's happening because God is moving and there's going to come a time in which that's it and we're out of here. And he's coming back for those that are looking for his appearance. And I don't think anybody living in sin would be looking for Jesus. So there may be things in your life you need to change. Everything is not sin. It's not appropriate. It, it doesn't edify. Do we, do we understand that? Paul says that in Corinthians. Everything is not sin. It's not appropriate. It's not... It, Everything is legally to do, but not everything is appropriate. It does not edify. It does not build character. It does not edify the brothers and sisters. In fact, you read the Bible in Romans chapter 14 and 15, it's all about the strong Christian making sure that they don't put any strongholds or stumbling blocks in the way of the weak Christians. Read that chapter, those two chapters in that light, talking to the strong Christians. In fact, chapter 15 says, you that are grown up in the Lord, that are strong in the Lord, walk right. Yes, Lord. Susan and me made this decision long ago. There's a lot of things that's legally for us to do, but we won't do it because it could cause you to fall. For your sake, we sacrifice. Every mother in here has sacrificed, not for herself, but for her children or her husband, or her husband has sacrificed. You, you know what I'm talking about, you that are mothers. So when you read the scriptures, you will always feel, you'll always see it's always for others. Yes, we have needs, and when those needs are met, now the thing is switches over. Now, Lord, you've met our needs. Now you can work through us to meet other people's needs. It's for the sake of others, for the sake of the church, for the sake of Christ. You watch that. You read your Bible, and you'll see that transition that God is bringing us over for others. All right, five more minutes, and we haven't got very far, but I'm hoping we're, you're learning something anyway. Okay. Knowing that, uh, that God is not angry or disappointed in you creates an atmosphere where you can freely turn your burdens over to Jesus and trust him and take care of them. Carrying around a burden of shame is a sure way to hinder the inner healing process because it mentally separates us from the healing work of Jesus. If we want to freely receive healing for our damaged emotions or strongholds or whatever it may be, then we need to settle it in our minds that God is not angry with us and, stands on, and stand on God's word about our sins being forgiven and washed from us by the blood of Christ. A couple of teachings he says he has on that, which is good. All right, so we'll stop there. We didn't get very far, but we covered some things I think that are necessary. And so, tonight you can leave this place. You can say without doubt that you're not mad at nobody. You're not even mad at yourself anymore. You're not even going to put yourself down anymore. Because, listen, if God can love you, who are you not to love yourself? Think about that for a moment. God loves you. God loves you. Yeah. He's for you. He's not against you. Best friend you ever had. He died for you. Remember that. Powerful, powerful. So, how do you feel inside tonight? From one to ten. 
How many tens do we have tonight? Now remember, that's the lowest. All right. Do we have any tens tonight? Any nines? Any eights? Any sevens? Any sixes? Any fives? All right, got one five back there. Any, what comes after five? Sixes? Six? All right. All right, five. It's six. You're six? You're five. You're five. You're five. You're five. Yeah, I'm going up better, 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 better. All right. Six. How many six? Anybody six is it? All right. No, I'm going. Yeah, okay. Four. I got you. Four. Any threes? Three. Three. That ain't bad. How about twos? Good. How about ones? Good. Now, always a measure. This is a, once you get your spirit free and you get your healing, anything that you can, now you can discern. You can feel like, hey, I'm angry. Well, welcome. Be angry. But sin not. So you recognize I'm angry. All right. Let's just say jealous. You're jealous. How many can identify jealousy? All right. You know that. So you say, Father, I thank you. It was taken care of at Calvary once and for all. The one sacrifice took care of that jealousy. And I appropriate it now. And I thank you, Lord. It will not dominate and control me. I know that my old man that had that jealousy died 2,000 years ago with Christ. And I reckon myself dead to that jealousy. But I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. So you're using the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit honors His Word. How many is getting it? Raise your hand if you get it. It's very important. Because if you're going to utter all kind of other stuff, He's not going to honor all that other stuff. You've got to put the Word of God on it. All right, how many can recognize? One more minute. How many can recognize when you're hungry? When you're tired? <sighs> when you're sleepy? When you're lazy? When you're passive, all right? Now, what do you do when you're passive? Well, you know, everybody needs an evening off. I mean, it's okay to just relax and all. God wants us to do that. But you know what I mean by passive? I mean, it can dominate your life. You can get so lazy, you don't even want to comb your hair. Well, I don't have to worry about it. I, oops, stay away from that, R.W. Okay. <laughs> I just love to see you guys smile, I tell you. So what I'm trying to teach now that, that, that the salvation is done. We've been reconciled back to God. We're free. We know what to do if we did sin. 1 John 1, 9. Right. But everything in the past is done, finished, clear. God don't remember them no more. As far as the east is from the west, they've been taken from us. And we're walking in the spirit now. We're feeding our spirit with the Word of God. We don't anticipate in gossip. And what did you say about that person now? I don't want to hear about that person. No, nothing but blessings. I bless, I bless. I overcome evil with evil. Huh? I'm just checking you out. No, with good. Because we reap what we sow. God bless you. Need prayer? Come up. We're glad to pray.